Shinobi! Over here, quick! It's an open tip, unguarded, anyone could drive up at night. During the day, it's pretty busy. No purse or handbag? Nothing. Is there nothing in the pockets? Only this. Heroin? Well, it's not sure, but... How long has she been there, Doctor? Is that all she was wearing? Well, there were some flattened boxes on top of her. Other rubbish. Might have kept her warm for a bit. Mm. At least 24 hours, possibly longer. I'll tell you more accurately after the PM. Death? Cracked skull, bruises to the arms, face and chest. Looks like she's been in a punch-up. Uh, again, subject to confirmation at the PM. Beaten up, killed, driven here and dumped. Well, she didn't walk here. When can I take possession? As soon as you like. End of the hippie trail, eh? Hmm? One of the beautiful people. Yeah, I'm sure she was. Yes, that's right. I want a complete list of registered and unregistered heroin users. We'll be getting a description of the girl over to you. I also want a list of vehicles, cars, lorries, dust carts, anything. Over the last week. Especially the last two or three days. There are some houses here, between this copse and the rubbish tip. I want them canvassed. Anybody who saw her heard yes, anything? Yes, Mr. Kingdom. That's already laid on. Missing persons are checking back over the last three years, and there are no messages yet about a disappearance. Maybe nobody's noticed. Who cares? This is our best bet so far. Found in the lining of the coat. English, history, French? School subjects? Well, at least it's got an address. Makes a starting point. Hmm. On my way, I thought you might like this. Some vital statistics. Female, age 24, 25, 5 foot 3, 8 stone. There's some dental work to the upper left molar. Everything except her telephone number. The time of death, Monday night. We should be doing some blood tests to see if she was using heroin. From her muscular development, I guess she was an athlete, acrobat, dancer, something of the kind. And also, she was three months pregnant. Another guess? No, that's definite. Your little lady led a full life. Let's start looking for the sweetheart who ended it. Let's do that then, Tom. Mm hmm. Council chamber on Tuesday. Right. Oh, I just got back from Manchester, Leeds, you name it. Uh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you, Tom. Right, bye. Hello, what's all this? Broker's men? These gentlemen are from Scotland Yard. They'd like a word with Paul. Paul? What about? We rather hope he might be able to help us with some inquiries. Well, he's not very well. He's only got up today. It'll only take a couple of minutes. It is important. Of course. Do you mind, dear? Mustn't impede the forces of law and order. I sit on the bench myself for my sins. Can I offer you a drink? Oh, no, thank you. It's not too serious, I hope. Your son's illness? Oh, just stomach cramps. Doctor thinks it's more nerves than anything else. He sits his bar finals next month. Big day for him. You, uh, you couldn't tell me what your inquiries are about, I suppose. Or shouldn't I ask? Oh, well, we have a piece of paper with some writing on. We just hope he might be able to identify it. May I see it? Chief Superintendent Kingdom and Inspector... Ward. Does this mean anything to you, Mr Freeman? I think so. It looks like the writing of a girl pupil of mine. Well, you teach? I do some private tuition. <laughs> he doesn't have to, but he, he likes to keep his stand on his own two feet, don't you, Paul? I think it's Trixie's. 
Patricia Donovan. But you're not sure? Well, I've got some of her writing in the study, if you'd like to compare it. Yes, we would, please. Uh, do you mind? Uh, excuse me. The devil's Trixie Donovan, do I know her? She's somebody Paul's trying to help. It's nothing serious, is it? Well, they don't have chief superintendents on parking fines. How long had she been your pupil? She's been coming here every week for nearly a year. She was sent to me by a girl called Sandra Williams. Sandra Williams? Yeah. Sandra was up at Cambridge with me, reading sociology. I think she's in India now, or Africa. Anyway, she suggested that I could put Trixie through her O-levels. O-levels? Bit old for that, wasn't she? I thought they started at 15. That's when she left home. She comes from a small place in Nottingham, a miner's daughter. She couldn't get on with her stepmother. What was her job? Well, she chopped and changed. Uh, when she first came, she told me she did a bit of modelling. Later, she worked in a strip club. I, I don't know, I think the last job she had was a part-time waitress. You see, she never talked about what she was doing now. It was always about the future. She wanted to get a degree. That was the only thing that mattered to her. She had more courage in her little finger. Did you know any of her friends? Oh, not really, no. Occasionally, I got the impression that she was living with some chap, um, Pete, somebody or other, musician. Well, I've got her address here somewhere, if you like it. A basement room in Notting Hill. I can imagine what it's like. You've never been there? I was never invited. Mm. Did she ever mention drugs to you? In what way? That she was using them, where she got them from. Never, no. Mm -hmm. Occasionally she would ask me about Mexican peyote or the effects of hallucinogens, but purely in an academic way. At least I always assumed so. Mm. It seems I was wrong. I'm afraid so. Well, thank you. You've been a great help. Have I? Mm. I suppose when it comes down to it, I really didn't know poor Trixie at all. What I knew was my own idealization of her. A poor girl trying to overcome her environment, you know. The truth is, for all I know, she might have enjoyed it. What does the doctor say? A punch-up? Who is Muhammad Ali? This is where it happened, all right. Yeah. Have a look around the other rooms. All right. Get a team over straight away. Mm -hmm. Fingerprints, forensic photographers. Yeah, all right. Oh, there's somebody giving us the once over through a pair of binoculars from across the road. Tell Foster to bring him in. Yeah, right. These two in the end room along the passage, in a sleeping bag. Did you indeed? What's your name, son? Uh, Jake. Look, what gives? What's happening? And yours? Well, her name's Lee. She doesn't speak a lot of English. We just dropped in last night from Morocco. Got a passport? Yeah. We're on our way to Scotland. This guy's got a cottage in Mal he said we could shack up in. A little friend have a passport? Yeah. Yeah, there was this guy in Marrakesh, he told us, if you get to London, call on Trixie for some muesli. Well, cornflakes, you know. Well, Lee's into cornflakes, right, Lee? Where are you in? This guy that was here. What guy? What was his name? Oh, he didn't say. Where is he now? Oh, he split. This chick and this other guy came and they went off. And you don't know their names, either? Right. Are you friends of Trixie's? Right. Well, that is, I never saw her, but Lee saw her in Ibiza, right, Lee? So... 
You arrive here, you doss down, there's a man here, you don't know who it is, he doesn't say anything, and you don't say anything. Say anything? What about? I heard they went off to listen to some sounds. This man who let you in, can you describe him? Well, he seemed a bit down. His appearance? Well, he's a normal sort of guy. He had a beard and hair, dark glasses, and he had this Mexican necklace. Is that the man? Yeah, right, that's the guy. That's his guitar. Pete Harris. Hey, listen, can we split? I mean, we got to see this guy in Mull. And what's the scene here? It's really paranoid. Yeah, it's paranoid, all right, but it's not funny. All right, I'll check their things. Mm -hmm. See what they've brought back with them from Marrakesh. Get statements from them, check them out with CRO. And then? What do you mean, and then? Get them a suite at the Ritz, all right. Yeah, come on, out you go. Come on. Get Monday night, a girl's murdered. Tuesday, they drop in for cornflakes. Life goes on. Concert of the Round Table Club, Monday night. Proceeds to save Secretary Christine Beaumont, LLB. Artist John Dixie, Marilyn Tucker, Pete Harris and others. I've got an idea that that's one he missed. You have? Well, he's obviously the chap that young Freeman was referring to. Pete, somebody or other. Musician. Obviously. What is it, something wrong? Wrong, yes. Like, what was she doing on a rubbish dump of all places? Sorry, don't see the connection. Nor do I. Come on, through there, please. Oh, so there's another cornflake freak. Mr. Wilkes, the gentleman with the binoculars. Oh, yeah. Are you a racing man, Mr. Wilkes? What's all this about? Well, you can't nick me. Actually, we can. What for? I ain't done nothing. Voyeurism. It's a very serious offence, isn't it? Five to ten years inside. You want? You ought to be ashamed of yourself, man of your age. Surely you've seen girls in their knickers before now? Look, I, no, I never... She's a right little tart, she is. She has all kinds in here. Hippies, jungle bunnies. Who? That slut that lives here. No wonder a bloke give her a bashing. When? Monday, wasn't it? He laid right into her, he did. He pulled her brassier off. Give her a right bunch of fives. And what happened then? I don't know. I'm not interested in that sort of filth, am I? Or did your glasses get steamed up? Look, you I saw nothing more? Wrong. She, uh, she drew the curtain. But I did see them drive off, though, in his car. What time? Nine. Half past. After the news. Both three parts gone, they were. Falling down. Bloody disgusting. You don't think I'm lying, do you? He's like that most of the time. He's worse than her. If it's not one bird, it's another. Is this the man you mean, Mr. Wilkes? That's him. They behave more like animals than human beings. It wasn't like that in your young days, was it? Eh? That's all right, Mr. Wilkes. The sergeant will help you. Help me what? Make a statement. Here, don't forget these. Never know what you might miss. Yes, sir, please. That's it, then. You must be joking. Hmm? From that room of his, he can't see further in than about here. And what he did see was enough. No, it doesn't add up. Well, look, what is wrong? There's the blood. The girl was killed here, driven to the dump. The evidence is all around. On top of that, we've got an eyewitness. So, Harris kills her, drives her off, comes back here, and rifles the place. So what's worrying you? Ah. Now, what's your real reservation? The girl was pregnant on hard drugs? And she was taking her own levels into the bargain. None of which adds up to a reason to throw her onto a heap of stinking garbage. So we're back to that. Sentiment. Lily on a dung heap. You don't like it. Look, between here and that dump, there's a small copse. Dark, secluded. Now, if Harris, or anybody else for that matter, wanted to get rid of the girl's body, why not dump it there? Easiest thing in the world. But no, he drove on deliberately. An act of contempt. Rubbish to rubbish. It's still a sentimental argument. There could be a hundred reasons. Name one. I can't. But I bet you when we lean on Mr. Harris hard enough, he will. Hey, watch it, everybody, we've got a bust. You're the fuzz, aren't you? I'm looking for a chap called Harris, Pete Harris. You're looking for a chap you named Pete Harris. Anybody here called Pete Harris? What about you, darling? You Pete Harris? All right, Hank, blow. Come on. Come on, happy love, blow. Do you mind? This is a private party. So you've no authority to come into these premises? Uh, this is Chief Superintendent Kingdom. I'm Inspector Ward. We're from Scotland Yard. 
I'm Christine Beaumont of Save. Now, if you don't mind. We'd like a word with Pete Harris. He's not here. Do you know where he is? I haven't the slightest idea. Just a minute. He's wanted it for questioning on a serious charge. I read the papers. Drug girl found on rubbish dump. Another degenerate hippie bites the dust. Serve the silly cow right. Miss Beaumont, we're trying to find who killed her. Now, you have a law degree. Clever girl, aren't I? Clever enough to know that harbouring a murder suspect can't do you any good or your organisation. Pete didn't do it. He told you that? I haven't discussed the matter with him, but I think I know the girl. I certainly know him. He's quite incapable of driving anyone to a rubbish dump, let alone someone he was fond of. He couldn't possibly do it. Somebody looking for me? Pete Harris. That's right. We're police officers. We'd like you to come down to the station and answer some questions. Why not? Pete, listen. It's all right, Chris. It's my business, not yours. Right, gentlemen, when did I last see Trixie Donovan? The answer is never. Don't lie, Harris. He's not lying, Alan. He's blind. Donovan's here, the girl's father. He's been to the mortuary and he's identified her. Good. Harris, mm -hmm. one conviction for possession. Heroin? Acid. Six months suspended sentence. What about the old boy? What's his name? Wilkes. Yeah. Oh, he's sticking by what he says. Oh, except that he now admits it may have been some other man he saw driving away. Not Harris. Uh, but it was the girl. What about the car? Can you identify it? No. Big, dark, shiny. Mm. Ask Mr. Donovan to come in, will you? Yeah, right. Oh, this Mr. Donovan. Oh, sit down, please. My name's Kingdom. I'm in charge of this investigation. Bit of a calm down, isn't it? I'm sorry? Seeing her there. White sheet and a slab. Last time I had the privilege, she was flaunting herself in the flashy car our boss had given her. When was that? For her 21st. You get good money taking your clothes off for a lot of old men. And that was about uh, four years ago. Aye. That lot soon come to an end, didn't it? I suppose he found some other little tart to lavish his money on. We're talking about your daughter, Mr Donovan. She's not my daughter. She ceased being that ten years ago. I'll give her the choice. Live with the family or without it. As far as I'm concerned, there was a stranger on that slab. As far as I'm concerned, there was the victim of a sadistic murder. It was four years ago the last time you saw your daughter? Aye. Did you know any of her friends, any of the people she was connected with? I don't know anybody. None of her fancy people. Nothing. Are you sure? Nobody, for instance, who had a large car? I work down a pit. I don't own a car, I walk. Last thing I got from her was this letter. Dear Daddy, it's very hard for me to write to you like this, after all our rounds... When was that? Two years ago. I'd given up the old life completely, it was rotten, and I hated it. I'm meeting different people now, who you and the rest at home would get on with. Drug addicts. Trouble is, I'm desperately short of bread at the moment. She needed money. Aye, for drugs. And you didn't let her have any? I told her to go to hell. Which was one piece of fatherly advice she did take. All right. I suppose you think I'm an hard man. I don't make judgments. You don't know. I sent that girl to the best school in the county. I did everything for that girl. More than I could afford. But it made no difference. She had to have things her own way. And that's what it brought her to. She wasn't like that when she was with me. Do you want to see what she was like? No. That's what she was like. Look. With the old world in her hands. Not bad for a pitman's daughter, is it? No, it isn't. I'm afraid you found her changed. It's not my fault. Is it? No. Whoever's fault it is, we'll find him. 
Can I keep this for a while? You'll get it back. All right. Thank you. We got a possible with the car. A new Jag, parked outside the house at about nine o'clock. Registration? Well, that's asking for it on a plate. It was only there a short while, ten minutes. Mm, that's long enough. Have you spoken to Harris about it? Yeah. See no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. He doesn't remember a thing. No, I bet he doesn't. That's why he's going to talk. Let's have him in. Right. All right, Harris. Song's over. Time for talking. Right, lad. Sit here. Sit up straight. Take your jacket off. Help him. Come on, come on. Right. How long have you lived with Trixie? Never lived with her. We share a flat. She has her playmates, and I have mine. Where's your playmate now? High Street, China. You want to give her a message? Now, look, don't be cocky, lad. They put blind men away for murder just the same as anybody else. Sleeve. What you go to China for? Heroin? What's that, a drug? I never use the filthy stuff. No, you don't, do you? You prefer acid, with a six-month suspended sentence hanging over you. Which would you rather do, six months or 20 years? What are you talking about? Murder. I didn't kill Trixie. You know damn well I didn't. Do I? Well, what do you think I did? Put a body in a taxi and slip the driver a teller to dump her on a rubbish We'll tip. deal with that problem later. Meanwhile, let's just concentrate on why you killed her. I didn't. You killed her, Harris. Just tell us why. I didn't. I couldn't have. Harris, you should always draw the curtains. I know you can't see out, but other people can see in. What people? A witness. I don't believe you. You were seen, Harris. Not me. You, Harris. He saw you do it. He'll identify you. No. Right. Bring in the witness. All right, come on. Now, you've seen this man before? Yeah, that's him. That's the one, the one who did that. No. What did you see? Well, uh, they were fighting, and she, she had uh, barely no clothes on. Then, then, what then? Well, he, uh, he, he finished her off, didn't he? No. No, I, I couldn't have killed Trixie. I couldn't have oh, deliberately yes, you killed could, her. quite easily. You don't what? know what you did, do you? What? Your mind was so blown with that poison, you could have killed yourself and half the street. Damn you! Beat her up. No. Yes, you. You beat her up, didn't you? I like Trixie. Your idea of liking somebody can be pretty aggressive, can't it? I was out of my mind. I was... I was tripping. I don't remember anything. Well, you better start trying. You're still under sentence. I wouldn't like to have to report that you've broken your undertaking. Oh. Maybe I hit her a bit once or twice. And when you'd finished hitting her once or twice? Well, I went away. I went out. You went out? Leaving her there... Beaten up, half naked, alone. You went out leaving her dead. No! What did she say? What did she do before you left? She did nothing because she was dead. Oh, no. Wait. There was this man she used to work for. Uh, Gonzella. Gonzella, she rang him. Mr. Gonzella, that's me. Chief Superintendent Kingdom, this is Inspector Ward. The law. To uh, what am I indebted, gentlemen? Uh, to whom? A man named Pete Harris. Excuse me. These contraptions. There. That's better. Pete Morris, did you say? Uh, Harris. You don't know him. I can't oblige. Is he supposed to be an acquaintance of mine? An acquaintance of an acquaintance. Trixie Donovan. Trixie who? Oh, Trixie Donovan. <laughs> One of my artists. A lovely girl. 
Lord of Promise. Which, according to her father, she fulfilled. Yeah. Well, you know how it is. She put a lot into her work. <laughs> how long is it since I've seen her? You tell us, Mr. Gonzalo. Well, time flies. It seems like only last week. As long ago as that. Why, is something wrong? Mr. Kingdom and I saw her more recently. In a mortuary. She's dead. Oh, don't tell me. Such a sweet, talented kid. What happened? An accident? She was murdered. Oh, no. You didn't know. Oh, me? Oh, why should I? Because it's plastered all over the papers. And because her picture's in here. Instead of up there with the rest of your talented artists. Oh, look, you don't really think... the whole talent in some contempt. You can't say that. Trixie. Little Trixie. How can you even think such a thing? I love the girl like my own daughter. We've got a daughter, Gonzalo. You know, you, you, you really upset me, these suggestions. I only knew how I felt about that child. Last year, uh, two years ago, she came to me, depressed, down in the dumps. I helped her back on her feet. Found her a nice flat where she could meet people. I even paid for her tuition. English, history, French, out of my own pocket. Do you know that? We know that she was three months pregnant. You blame me. I did everything for that girl. She had only to ask. I gave her everything she wanted. Including heroin. Uh, will you... Will you go away, please, and leave me alone? Oh, performance over, Gonzella. Just leave me alone. You own a new car, Jag. License number VLP642K. <laughs> you looked it up, did you? A car of that description was seen outside Trixie Donovan's flat on the night she was murdered. Who told you that cock and bull story? Morris, Harris, whatever his name is? It was later seen at the rubbish tip where the girl's body was found. That's a lie. Harris was with the girl when she phoned you at half past eight. He later confirms that you arrived at the flat. And what? Bashed her over the head? <laughs> What does that crazy bastard know? What did he see? He's blind. Then you are acquainted. He's a freak, an acid head. His mind's been blown for years. Trixie rang to say that he was giving her trouble. She wanted my help, which I didn't give. Why not? Because I was afraid. Of a blind man? Of Clara, my wife. She was here when the call came. She didn't know that Trixie and I had go back together again. She told me if ever I saw her that she'd, she'd walk out and close up the business. I'm greedy. And I'm a coward. But your car was identified by a reliable witness. I told Clara to go to hell and take her money with her. Then I drove around. When I got there... You killed the girl, then searched the place for the heroin that you'd given her, leaving enough dabs to put you inside for the rest of your life. I didn't leave any dabs. I didn't go in. I sat in the car for five, ten minutes. Then I came back here and tore up Trixie's picture. You're a liar, Gonzella. A fat, lecherous, drug-peddling pig. I didn't go in, Superintendent. And I didn't kill that girl. I loved her. I got a kick out of buying her nice things. Like a daughter. People don't put up nude photographs of their daughters for dirty old men to leer at. Nor did I. There's still the matter of the drugs, Gonzella. Oh, do you I want a straight answer. I have never taken drugs in my life. And so far as I know, nor had she. He's lying. He has to be. The heroin was found in her pocket. Unless... Unless what? Unless she was a pusher. Maybe she has a stash of the stuff at her place. Why not? She's been an addict and a stripper and the next thing to a prostitute. Now she's a trafficker. Well, at least it would explain why the place was ransacked. What other explanation is there? None. Oh, Doctor, it's Kingdom. Yeah, what about that blood report you were going to let me have? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's definite, is it? Right, now I got the same information from another source. 
All right, you let me have confirmation. Thank you. Bonzella was right, was he? No trace of heroin in the blood or anything else. That changes the direction of the case, doesn't it? Does it? Well, I think it must. If the girl was a oh, pusher. Oh, if, 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 if she's this, if she's that. All we've proved so far is that we know damn all about her. Well, maybe we should have another go at both Harris and Gonzella. What do you suggest? What do I suggest? I suggest you go over that flat again with a fine tooth comb. What exactly is safe? We help addicts, dropouts, alcoholics. In what way? We fix them up with what they need most. A room, advice, money? The sense that they are not entirely alone. And you don't ask questions? They trust us, we trust them. They're full of suspicion at first that we're just another bunch of do-gooders or do-badders trying to cure them or condemn them, them, the other side. We have to convince them that we're not. We accept them as they are. Even if they're criminals? They're not criminals to us. It's you that ties the labels on them. No, not me. The courts. I know it's an imperfect system, but it tries to be fair. Fair? To whom? Look. I'm sorry, but I really have other but things to do. Please don't go. Well, there's no point. We don't even talk the same language. And it will damage my reputation if I'm seen talking to the fuss. I can't do anything for you. You want information? I don't have it. I've told you, I don't ask questions. All I know about the case you're working on is what I've read in the paper. Nothing more. And if you did know any more, you wouldn't tell me, right? Save is for outsiders, the rejects. And it can't? It mustn't? Help straights like me. What help do you need? To understand a little more than I do. But I know I'm a copper. But it was a copper who was called to find that girl lying half naked on a mountain of filth and rubbish. All right. So even policemen have mothers. What did you feel, pity? Yes. And outrage. You've got your hang ups, I've got mine. But I try not to be sentimental or prejudiced. Look, I'm prejudiced in favour of a 24 year old girl who won't be 25. I hardly knew her. Even a little might help. Maybe she's better off now than she's ever been. Oh, well, there's nothing in the end rooms. Well, at least nothing that would interest the governor. Yeah, one is never too sure what interests the governor. OK, let's have another go at this room. Yeah, right. She dropped in two or three times, mostly with Pete Harris. She didn't say much. Then one night she volunteered to sit on the phone with me. She opened up. You say the word pusher, and you think it's the worst crime there is. The people I deal with don't. They're not your sort of people. They live in a different world, with its own rules for survival and its own morality. Hard drug addicts, when they're hooked, really hooked, I mean, they only have one code, one rule, one need. To feed the monkey on their backs, the habit. You might have to go for a whole week without food. Sleep in filthy doorways. And if you're a girl, sell yourself to any old tramp for a bit of money. Money is everything. Maybe she was a link in the underground connection. I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised. She had a rough time. When she talked to me, it wasn't about the degree she came down with. The what? From Cambridge, a sociology degree. Why? Oh, nothing. Carry on. Did she ever mention her parents? Not much. Her mother was a big wheel in the Institute of Women Executives. And her father was an architect. Why? What is it? My girl's father was a coal miner. She didn't have a degree. She was doing her O-levels. Sandra? Sandra Williams. Yes, that's right. Pete Harris's girlfriend. Well, she lived with him. Well, isn't she the girl on the rubbish dump, the girl in the paper? Yeah, Miss Beaumont, that's one of the disadvantages of never asking questions. My interest is in a girl called Trixie. Oh, damn! Oh, wait a minute, maybe onto something here. Yeah? Here's a loose floorboard. Oh, come on, get it up there. Yeah, try these. Feel something under here. 
Feels like a bag or something. Can't quite reach them, though. Let me. Yeah, I got it. Whatever business little Trixie was in, it was certainly profitable. Yeah. I want you to pick up a girl called Sandra Williams. All right? Yeah. Get on the drug squad. They might be able to help. Right. Sandra okay. Williams, that rings a bell. It should do. Let's ask young Freeman. inconvenient. Paul's been up to his eyes in work. I'm sure all these questions will only be a terrible distraction to him. We'll try not to keep him too long. The fact is he shouldn't be upset at all. Dr. Phillips was here again today. His instructions were that Paul needs complete rest. Your husband didn't seem to think that your son was too ill. My husband wasn't here on Monday night. He was driving up the M1 when Paul was doubled up in agony. Paul very rarely rings the doctor. In fact, he usually tends to make light of things. Look, I apologise, Mrs. Freeman, that but I must damn insist... damn girl. I wish Paul had never brought her into the house. I assume you want to see me, Superintendent? Yeah, I'm sure I can give the Superintendent any information he needs. I'm sure you can, but he'd prefer to talk to me. If you'd like to come into the study. Thank you. Listen, Paul. Daddy gave strict instructions. I'm all right, right, Mother, really. Mrs. Freeman here. Is my husband there? Yes, it's most urgent. She's very sweet, but she does fuss a bit. I can see myself about to plead at the Old Bailey and Mother will rush in with my woolly vest. Yes, that might be a bit embarrassing. Ah. Forensics, eh? Heavy work. <laughs> How are you getting on? Well, it's a bit of a cram. Intend to specialise? I'm just concentrating on passing. Yes, must be difficult. Just now, particularly. You mean Trixie? No, I was thinking about your health, actually. Your mother seems very concerned. I told you mother's concerned if I sneeze. She's on to the doctor immediately. Oh? She told me you sent for the doctor on Monday night. What's the difference? Quite a significant one. What time did he come? Nine o'clock. Is that what you've come to ask me? No, we want to just check one or two discrepancies in your statement. What statement? I didn't make any statement. I was just trying to help. Might have helped us a great deal more if you'd told us the truth. You don't think I killed Trixie, do you? Well, if the doctor was here at about nine o'clock, you, you couldn't have. He was. You can check with him. And what did he prescribe? Prescribe? Well, you had stomach cramps. What else did you have? High temperature, fever, sweating, dizziness, nausea, all the symptoms of acute withdrawal. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Kingdom is talking about heroin, Mr. Freeman. He'd like to know how long you've been addicted. Were you getting it on the illegal market, Paul? Your name's not on the register. If it were, Trixie would still be alive. Why weren't you registered? I couldn't tell my parents. It would have destroyed them. If I'd have gone onto the register, the doctor would have been round here like a shot. He and Mother are good friends. Not that I'd have minded her knowing so much. Father's the one. My son, the barrister. That's all he ever talks about. Last week he was already thinking of who he was going to invite to my passing out party. All his council colleagues. All I could think about was making a score, getting a fix. My son, the drug addict. And the heroin in Trixie's pocket. That was for you, was it? She was supplying you. She was trying to get me off it. We both tried. It was rather stupid, wasn't it? She thought that if she supported me, if she held my hand, she could get me to kick it. And for a while, I almost made it. I actually went two whole months without a shot. But my finals were coming up, and I knew that I wasn't going to pass them, and I knew that I had to. I had to. I had to. By the beginning of last week, I was biting my arm till I bled. I was banging my head against the wall. I was going crazy. And then? I did what I always did. 
I called Trixie. Hello? Yes? Who? Oh, yes, yes, he's here. Kingdom. Bates here. We picked up Sandra Williams. She's in a very poor state. Can you get a doctor? Oh, yeah, I've already sent for him. Right. We'll be over shortly. Audrey? I see the police are here again. What's happened? Oh, Jack. Jack! It's all right, my dear. It's all right. There's no need to worry. How much stuff were you using, Paul? More than I could afford. I gave Trixie every penny I could scrape together. Where was she getting it? I don't know. She had her sauce. What sauce? I don't know. I really don't. It was part of our bargain. I helped her with her studies. She took over my secret life. She ran it. She was the one who groveled in the dirt. I remained pure and above suspicion. You seem to have trusted her with quite a lot. Of course. She was carrying my baby. We were married. Nobody knew? I was going to get through my exams, get a job. We were going to move to a small flat. Trixie had saved some money. And nobody knew? Nobody at all? Just me and Trixie. And the person who killed her? Killed her? Killed who? Are you accusing my of son? Murder. No. He's accusing himself. What are you talking about? Perhaps he'll tell you now. It's about time. Well, I want the house searched. Drugs, syringes, any sort of evidence that might help. Young Freeman tries to leave the house. Pull him in, bring him straight down to the station. All right. Now, Sandra, when was the last time you saw Trixie? Trix... Trixie Donovan? I don't know. I don't remember. You gave her some heroin, didn't you? Huh? No. No, she never used it. Not for her. For Paul Freeman. Paul... Who's Paul Freeman? You know very well who Paul Freeman is. You were at university with him. You introduced him to Trixie. Did I? I don't remember. Yes, you do. I don't remember anything. I don't know anything. Now, Sandra, you know Trixie's dead, don't you? Is she? Oh, lucky girl. You know she's dead. And what's more, I think you know who killed her. I don't. I don't know anything. Leave me alone. Now, Sandra, you're going to talk to me, and you're going to tell me everything I want to know. I don't know anything, and I'm not going to tell you anything. Now, leave me alone. Sandra! Oh, tell them to leave me alone, Pete. I don't want to talk to anybody. You've got to, Sandra, for Trixie's sake. I shouldn't have run out on you, Peter. I just felt rotten. It's all right. You're back now. I hear you had a rotten trip. Yeah. We all had. That's all there is to it, Father. I was in my second year. I went along to this party. I took Sandra Williams. She made you start. She made me start. I made her start. What does it matter? What matters is that I couldn't stop. A year later, I was using it every week. Then more often. I had a contact who went away, left me high and dry. I was in a panic. I didn't know anybody. Finally, I traced Sandra. She was living in Trixie's house. I'd never met anybody like Trixie with her strength, courage. We talked all through the night. She understood how I felt, why I couldn't talk to you or to Mother. That was the only thing that mattered to me. Go on. What else is there? When I knew that she was dead, I blamed myself. Now, I just think that it was inevitable. She was never lucky with anything. Least of all with me. She was a stupid bitch. She was my best friend. My only friend, I suppose. She was stupid. Everybody used her. Pete and me included. Anyone could come in and do what they liked. She never asked questions. 
But I did it the worst possible turn I could. You kept her supplied with heroin? I introduced her to Paul. And he bloody well exploited her. She did everything for him. Wiped his little nose. She worked for him. She scored for him. And she not only carried him on her back, she carried his rotten parents too. And that wasn't fair. I'd told her that for months. I tried to make her see some sense that that little swine was conning her. She just smiled. So you decided to take things into your own hands? But I wanted to help her, didn't I? I owed it to her. She helped everybody else. Somebody had to help her. That's fair, isn't it? Isn't it? Look, I didn't want her to end up like me. That's fair, isn't it? Yeah. That's fair. What happened, Sandra? What did you do? I rang Paul's father. Why didn't you talk to me, Paul? Don't you trust me? Don't you have any confidence in me? I didn't want to hurt you, Dad. You've always wanted to be proud of me. You needed that. You deserved it. Mother, too. What the hell's pride got to do with it? What about feeling? What about love? Don't you think that's important? Don't you think I loved you? Don't say that, Dad. Not now. Please. Why not? Why not, for heaven's sake? Because it's too late. It's irrelevant. You're a very silly boy, Paul. You should have trusted me. Sandra Williams trusted her parents. They kicked her into the street. That might have been the best solution. But I don't understand. You, you know everything now. You know all the facts, don't you? Why are you back again? One small point, Mrs. Freeman. You told us that Paul had phoned for the doctor on Monday night. He told us you did. Now, which was it? It was neither of them. I rang him, as I'm sure you know. You? But you were on your way north. I made a slight detour. I don't understand. Get some ice, will you, love? There's a good girl. Do you need my fingerprints, Superintendent, to confirm that I ransacked the girl's flat? What were you looking for? A heroine? She wouldn't say anything, admit to anything. She didn't seem to understand me. I didn't understand her. Or what a stupefied man was doing there while she was almost naked. He was blind. I was, too, with anger, disgust. I just struck out at her. She hit her head. I, I grabbed her coat, tried to rush her to a doctor, but she died. I was driving along with a dead stranger in the car. Then I saw this rubbish tip. I thought of my son, my wife, my work, my whole life ruined by a half-naked slut, a dope peddler, nothing, a load of rubbish. Mr. Freeman, no one's a load of rubbish.